Welcome everybody, happy Saturday. I'm Leslie Frank, proprietor of Frank Family Vineyards and we are coming to you live. It is two o'clock here on the West Coast and uh, I'm being told to unmute myself. Can you hear me at home? Can you hear, can you hear me? Can hear you, yeah. yeah. Okay, fantastic. So welcome everybody. I'm Leslie Frank, proprietor of Frank Family Vineyards. This is our Frank Family Vineyards Women and Wine uh, webinar in honor of Mother's Day. Mother's Day, of course, is tomorrow. It's Sunday, so we don't want to forget about mom. And what we've done today is we have selected a few of our favorite wines that we love to sip along with mom. And let me introduce um, our panelists today. We have our assistant winemaker, Corey Garner, who is joined by tasting room manager and one of our lead wine educators, Zahava Kreiser, and our marketing manager, Marissa McCann. Certainly three of my favorite ladies and fabulous women who work here at Frank Family Vineyards, uh, along with myself. So this is an interactive hour. We want to hear your questions and your comments, and I'm already getting a few, which is fantastic so thank you for playing along and we want to make this really fun we have some trivia questions we have four as a matter of fact throughout the next 60 minutes so you'll want to pay attention because there will be hints along the way and we want to see if you're listening and um, the first person to answer in the chat section the first person to answer the question correctly in the chat section will win a $100 gift certificate that they can use on our shop site towards the purchase of anything Frank family. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, start with you, Marissa McCann, who will be talking about our 2011 Lady Edith Bubbles. Great, well, thank you guys. I'm so happy to be here today. I'm usually behind the scenes doing a lot of our virtual tastings, the tech and, and the logistics behind it. So it's nice to share um, and now we're with you guys today and talk about one of my favorite wines here, our 2011 Lady Edith. Um, so it's so fitting to have this wine for Mother's Day. For those of you who don't know, Lady Edith, it's named after Rich Frank's mother, Edith Frank, and the matriarch of the Frank family. So we're kicking off today's pre-Mother's Day celebration with this wine. It's also a wine that I tend to enjoy with my own mom, who I think is joining us today. So shout out to Lori McCann, um, following along in Connecticut. Um, so our Lady Edith, it's our reserve sparkling wine. And for that reason, it gets a lot more pampering in the, in the cellar. And um, Corey can go more into that in a bit. Um, but just the basics, Frank family here, we're really honored to be among the handful of California wineries that produce sparkling wines using the method Champenoise. And that's the same method that they use in Champagne, France, and they have been using it for centuries. And um, I think the biggest indicator to assessing a good quality sparkling wine is the bubbles itself. I mean, the bubbles, um, it just plays a huge role in the enjoyment of sparkling wine. So if you have this bottle open at home, uncork it and take a look at those pretty bubbles. Um, Leslie, last week when we did our sparkling wine virtual tasting, I believe you said it best that the bigger the bubbles, the bigger the troubles. Um, so when you're tasting sparkling wine, you want small bubbles. They just um, create more of a creamy and smoother mouthfeel on the palate. And that's what you're definitely getting here with our Lady Edith. Um, so our Lady Edith, it's mostly Chardonnay based, but we have about 30% Pinot Noir as well. And you can definitely taste that in the wine. Um, the Chardonnay gives you a lot more of um, citrus flavors and freshness, but then the Pinot, it's adding a little bit more complexity and some more oomph to this wine. So we definitely tasted that last weekend next to our Blanc de Blanc, which is a little bit brighter and zippier. This one is a little bit more mature and elegant and a little bit richer on the palate. Corey, I know that you love to make bubbles. As a winemaker, it's probably one of the more challenging things that you, you have to do. What is it about this wine that makes it so special um, and so challenging as a winemaker to come up with this perfect blend? I would say the, the most challenging part about the Lady Edith is, is what adds the complexity to it when, especially when you're comparing it to our Blanc de Blanc. 
Um, and it's, it's coming up with the perfect blend of Chardonnay Pinot Noir. It also sees a little bit of a barrel fermentation. Uh, this 11 vintage, I believe was about 40% barrel fermentation. Um, so we put that in a, in a used French oak barrel. So you're not getting those barrel flavors, but you're getting that texture and that mouthfeel from those. Um, and then it's, it's just the, how once it's bottled initially, it's first bottling, which we call the tirage bottling, as we discussed uh, last week with the, the crown cap, and it gets a secondary fermentation and bottle. Once that's done, um, we don't disgorge, this is what we call a late disgorged wine. We don't disgorge this for another five to six years. Um, that it'll, well, we disgorge it even longer than five to six years. It rests on its lees for five to six years. Um, additional, um, and it's a, a term that we call autolysis, and it's the yeast cells that are in the bottle. Um, they're converting that sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide byproducts um, and creating those bubbles, but that, that yeast um, is, once it's broken down and, and dead, um, it's those, that rupturing of it that's giving it all those toasty, yeasty, um, and it gives it complexity. It's just all these amazing qualities that it'll give it that you won't see in a, a traditional Blanc de Blanc. Um, and that's where it's, it's holding it that long. That's the hard part is, is patience is not, not <laughs> always one of my virtues. <laughs> but this is obviously a wine that, that you can tell patience is required and, and the end result is, is really what matters. And I get that, I get that beautiful baked bread on the nose of this wine. Okay. Uh, Marissa, there is a story that goes along with this wine, and you want to share a little bit about that? And we think that the Lady Edith is so appropriate for Mother's Day for this reason. Yeah, so the Lady Edith, as I mentioned, it's, um, this is a wine named in honor of Edith Frank, and um, uh, I've heard so many wonderful stories about Edith, and um, we, so much of her spirit is really alive in this wine. She was just a woman of, of, of elegance and um, she just really had a caring and generous nature about her and I think that really comes through. And I was fortunate enough uh, that Edith Frank was my mother-in-law and we lost her um, in 2011. She was 94 years old and she was just the most lovely woman and I was so fortunate, so fortunate to know her and um, my husband, obviously, this is a, a tribute to his mother. So we think about her often. And, and certainly every time we open a bottle of this beautiful sparkling wine, we raise a glass to my husband's mom and, and my, my mother-in-law, Edith Frank. Um, your spirit lives on in this, in this beautiful wine and in everything that we do here at Frank Family. So there, cheers, cheers to Edith. Um, I want to say a few uh, hellos. We have uh, Falana Bouvier who says hello. Aloha. She is in Hawaii. Hi, Falana. Thanks for watching. Marla Tanamoto says cheers from Austin, Texas. Uh, that's Marla and Greg, actually. Kelly Kerrigan is watching us from Vegas. Hi, Kelly. Uh, hi from Anne in Michigan. Hi, Anne. Cheers from Maui. That's uh, Grace and Bud Allen. And let's see, uh, Liz McQuiston. Hi, Liz. Thanks for watching again this week. And um, if you're with the girls, say hello to the girls as well. And I know, Liz, this is one of your favorites. So cheers to you uh, on this beautiful Saturday. It, uh, for those of you who are watching from afar, it is really warm in Napa Valley. Temperatures in the 90s. Marissa, you're braving the yeah. heat out there today. Uh, we're definitely getting summer-like weather. I know that's not the case across much of the country. We're very fortunate here. Uh, we look forward to the day, hopefully in the not too distant future, that we reopen our tasting room and we can see all of your wonderful faces again, all of our guests who we miss so much and our wine club members. But until then, we will continue to come to you virtually on Saturdays. Uh, hello from Clermont, Florida, and that's from Lori Edelman. And Christina Brown is, says hello from Atlanta. Juan Porter, hi, I got all my favorite female winemakers sitting next to me. <laughs> that's, uh, that's his lovely Joanna. So hi Juan and Joanna for watching. Joanna is a winemaker in Napa Valley as well. And let's see. Hello from Christina Radu. She is in Los Angeles. Hi, Christina. Thanks for watching today. And 
many, many more. Um, too many that I could take up the whole hour saying hello from all the guests who are joining us. So if I don't get to your name, thank you. We appreciate uh, your attendance here today. And please ask some questions. Let us know if you have any questions about anything that we're tasting today or any questions for any of us. Um, I want to move on a little bit. Um, actually, Marissa, let's Let's do our first question, our sure, first question, because it does have to do with the Lady Edith, and you did cover this, so let's see who was paying attention. Okay, so I'm going to ask the question, and the first person to write the correct answer in our chat will receive a digital gift certificate that I will personally email you next week. So, first question is, what is the name of the process Frank Family uses to produce our sparkling wine? And we are accepting three possible answers here. Three oh. possible answers. And, oh, oh, okay. So let's see, who got it? Well, yeah, it's not the full name, no. It's not the full name. Okay, the first, okay. So it's, all right, not to, okay. So so someone said champenois, but, the, but it's, but the, the turn is, method champenoise and Krista Carberry is the first person to get that correct it's the full term method champenoise congratulations Krista I know Krista she is an, a, a, a very loyal wine club member and has traveled with Rich and myself and our winemaker Todd um, a number of times on our Frank family cruises, and she's a great supporter of Frank family. So thanks, Krista, for tasting along. Um, you beat Liz on that one. I don't know. You're gonna have whatever you buy. You're gonna have to share it with her. So, uh, so method champenois was the correct answer. All right, moving on to a mother and a grandmother, and one of my favorite people here at Frank Family, Zahava Kreiser. And Zahava, I always say, it really doesn't matter what your last name is because you are like Cher and Madonna. You know, you only need one name. You are Zahava, you're the only Zahava I know, and really the only one who really matters, right? Right here at Frank Family. People know Zahava. I would agree, I would agree. <laughs> Tell us why, the 2018 Lewis Vineyard is your favorite wine that Frank had. Okay. As a general statement, uh, the, the, um, our Lewis Vineyard Chardonnay is probably one of our most favorite wines. I have loved it um, since I first started working here. Um, it's an awesome wine, mostly just because, um, you know, some of the best things about Frank family wine is the consistency and the balance of the wines that we make. And that's just a general statement for all of our wines. Um, our Lewis Vineyard Chardonnay um, is just um, really creamy, really rich, really round. It's so easy and dangerously pleasant um, to drink. <laughs> um, this wine, you know, as we do all our wines at Frank Family, ages in French oak. This ages in 11 months. This is always brand new French oak. 11 months 100%. of 100% uh, brand new French oak um, versus our Napa Chardonnay, which still ages in French oak. It's just not all brand new. So some of the things I really enjoy about this, um, uh, some of the French oak characteristics, a general statement again you know anytime you uh, smell or taste in wine a little coffee toffee creme brulee butterscotch vanilla. caramel vanilla cinnamon these are all characteristics that can initiate out of french oak so it's one of the reasons i really enjoy french oak specific to the 2018 vintage this is um really butterscotchy, stone fruity, peachy, peary. Um, and like I say, really, really elegant. It drinks uh, wonderful and pairs with so many uh, really, really great foods um, and just really all by itself. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a Boston girl, so I will tell you that this is a perfect pairing with lobster and clams. Um, we had some awesome friends send us out actually a clam baked dinner last Saturday night, um, and we did our own little Zoom with our friends Joan and Bob um, and shared lobster, clams, and Frank family Chardonnay. <laughs> a real perfect pairing. So. 
Okay. That sounds amazing. And Zahava, it's really too bad that you're not passionate about what you do, you know? <laughs> I, love, I love to hear Zahava talk about our wines. And every time I walk into one of her tastings, um, I learn something. And, you know, just when you think you know it all, there's something else that, that she will throw at me. And I'm like, I, I, I never thought of it that way. But this, mm -hmm. I love to hear you talk about this wine because I do know that it's your favorite. And while you're not drinking it with your mom, you are drinking it with your daughter. And, well, not quite your grandchildren because they're not there yet. And speaking <laughs> of your daughter, Jessica, right? Yep. Your just, daughter. Just a shout out. Yeah, just a shout just, out okay. to my daughter. Well, yeah, Jessica. Well, she just uh, gave you a shout out. You, your me? daughter just gave you a shout out here and she's saying happy Mother's Day to you from, oh, from oh. self and the grandkids. So she's oh, watching. Oh, thanks. Jessica. Hi, Jess. Hi, Grace. Hi, Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, my daughter, uh, actually, I do share this with my daughter. I think she's sitting there right now drinking also Frank Family Chardonnay um, with a bunch of her friends. And uh, so hi to all of you guys, too. So thanks for um, always enjoying and sharing. <laughs> in Boston right now? Are your, your family, yep. are they in Boston? Boston, okay. just north of Boston, Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. I love Massachusetts. I love Boston. I love, I love the whole state. It's just, it's such a great place. And yes, when you're talking about that lobster and Chardonnay, we have a lobster and Chardonnay uh, feast here at Frank Family Vineyards every year and it sells out. It's in August. For those of you who have been before, you know how much fun it is. And we go through a lot. We go through a lot of Chardonnay at that event. We're hoping, fingers crossed, we're hoping we can carry through with it again this year. But again, it's too early to tell. We're not open for business yet. Hopefully we'll be reopening in the next few weeks. Again, it's something that uh, depends on, on what our governor says and, and, We'll have to introduce some new protocols when we get the tasting room back open, but that's at a later date. Right now, we're talking about wine, and I want to give a shout out to my mother, Dorothy Miller, who, I, if she was able to figure out how to get on Zoom, <laughs> is watching, um, and I said, Mom, you just click the link, and you know, it's, it's a little challenging. But we're all learning the technology, believe me. Um, I never heard of Zoom until we had this shelter in place and started doing all the Zoom meetings, but um, she's, she's watching, uh, and she lives in Ontario, Canada, just outside of Toronto, so hi, Mom, if you're watching. I know my mom loves the Chardonnay, but she also loves this one, and this is our s and J Reserve Petite Syrah. And this is one of my favorites. I think it's one of those wines that, Corey, correct me if I'm wrong, we sometimes forget about because we get so, we're such a cab-centric area. And we, we um, produce a number of uh, levels of, of Cabernet, starting with our Napatier, going all the way up to our Patriarch. And sometimes we forget about these other varietals. Is it, isn't that true? I agree. Um, the, it's Napa Cab. That's, it's worldwide. It's, it's known as one of those great, you know, like Bordeaux, France or, or Burgundy, France. It's, it's known and, and world renowned, I would say, as a, as a Cabernet place. We grow Cab in Napa. We all know that that's no secret. Petite Syrah is, is one of those kind of lesser known, I feel, um, varietals. And it's, it's often unknown by a lot, especially out of California. Um, I don't know if, if, if you aren't too familiar with Petite Syrah. Um, a lot of people think it's, it's Syrah. And it's, it's not. It's actually Syrah was a, a parent grape to Petite Syrah. Um, discovered in France from a botanist who it accidentally cross-pollinated with another smaller French bridal in his greenhouse. Um, and that's where, where Petit Syrah came from. It was named after him, which uh, the botanist's name was Dorif, I believe. Um, and it got brought to California from that way and Californians loved it. Uh, Dorif doesn't, isn't romantic. It doesn't sound all that exciting. So we renamed it Petite Syrah um, <laughs> because it was a, a little bit, you know, a little bit different from its parent grape, but it's, it's really kind of outshone it for us, but it's Petite Syrah or, or any sort of whatever they're calling the Petite Syrah grape. It's just, it's not really focused on in any other parts of the world. I think Israel is the only other part of the world where really they make really good and, and focus on mm -hmm. what we call Petite Syrah. Um, so it's unique to California. 
and it's forgotten about, but it's, you can drink it with, with everything you can drink a cab with food wise. You can, you can go to Petit Syrah. Um, the difference to me with the Petit Syrah and a cab is with the Petit Syrah, you get a little more of those blue fruits, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to Cabernet, it's black, you know, black cherry, blackberry and, and that, whereas Petit Syrah, you'll get a little more blueberry or plum, but you also get this wonderful acid and pepper, um, like a black pepper acid Mm -hmm. and very tannic. So it really holds up well to, to not only the, any meat you're going to serve, gamey food, anything gamey, duck, Mm -hmm. uh, venison. Yes. Any sort of game, it's, it's going to be a great pairing to. But also one of my favorite notes that I pick up in Petite Syrahs always is a a black chocolate cake, Mm -hmm. like a a double death by chocolate kind of cake where you're getting those baking spices from all the French oak that Zahava loves. Mm -hmm. You get that in the, in the red wines in the form of baking spices. And then you get this, just the wonderful acidity of the, the grape that's natural to it, plus the pepper. And, and it just, it really, it's like drinking a chocolate cake in a glass. So you don't need food with it. It's, I was just going to say this, all of the foods that you described, yes, it does pair perfectly with those, but I'm enjoying it. Just sipping it here on a Saturday afternoon with you ladies. It's, it's really, it's delicious. This is a single vineyard <laughs> wine. It's from our S and J vineyard in Capel Valley, which is right between um, Atlas Peak and um, Child's Valley, some right right around there. And I, I agree, it's, it's just, it's structured, it's got the tannins, it's got the blue fruit, and it's a hearty wine, which just pairs so well with food. Uh, the S&J Vineyard in Capel is named after our grandchildren, Stella and Jeremy, uh, Daryl Frank's two children, and Stella, um, who is a first year student at the University of Wisconsin, sadly, like most of the other university students, she had to come home early and do the rest of her classes online with uh, what's happening in the world. And Jeremy, well, he'll be going off to college in about another year. So um, not children anymore, but they certainly were when the vineyard was purchased and it was named the S&J Vineyard. So cheers to uh, the Frank family and Stella and Jeremy and the beautiful Petite Syrah that comes off that vineyard. And again, there is nothing, I always, I always think uh, people who are not familiar with a Petite Syrah, Corey, it's, uh, the, the name can be misleading because there is nothing petite about this wine. It is a big wine. The color too. Very, very color. big wine. The color is, great pink color. Pink color is beautiful. Pink purple. It's beautiful. I just, I love it. And again, it's one of my favorites and uh, it's one that I've tasted with my mom and she loves it. Although, you know, mothers can be that way. They're very biased um, when it comes to <laughs> their, their children's lives and accomplishments. And that's a, that's a good thing. Um, Anytime we drink a wine that isn't Frank family, and we do drink many wines that are not Frank family, I'll say, mom, try this. And she'll, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, show her a beautiful burgundy. And, and she'll say, yes, it's nice, but your wine is better. And it's spoken like a true mother, right? It's, it's great. So, so cheers to you, mom. Um, Marissa, I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna hand it back over to Marissa for another trivia question. Yeah, so we can actually go back. We didn't ask, we didn't ask the Louis Chardonnay question. So no, we did. he was paying attention to that one and see if you guys remember. So this is our second question back to our Louis Chardonnay. How many months did our 2018 vintage Louis Vineyard Chardonnay spend in French Oak? So we're looking for. Oh, 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 and by the way, I should say you can only win one. So Krista Carberry won the first time. Krista, you can't win again. Um, you can play along, but yeah. Okay, Margaret Massey, you were quick on the draw for that one. You, 11 months, you got it right. Margaret Massey. Um, Marissa, do you wanna let our guests know um, how, how you will contact them to, to get them their gift certificate? Yeah, so if you are the ones who registered for this tasting, I have your email address and I will be emailing you personally from my account on Monday. If you did not register for this tasting, um, feel free to just DM us on Facebook or Instagram or even send us an email. We'll, we'll get in touch somehow. <laughs> we'll make sure of it. Okay, so um, I want to take a couple of questions here. And again, feel free to, to ask questions, uh, those of you who are sipping along with us um, in the Q&A 
throw me a question. I've got a few in the chat section here. Um, Brenda Schroer, I, I think that you answered this already, Corey, but she was asking the difference between a petite Syrah and a Syrah. And I think you touched on that, but do, we don't really see Syrah here in Napa Valley. Syrah isn't too big in Napa Valley, correct? Um, so it's, it's a misconception that, that Petite Syrah and Syrah are the same thing. Um, petite Syrah, again, Syrah is the parent. When, uh, when Petite Syrah was created, it was an accidental, they think, cross-pollination of a Syrah vine with a, a different, I, I always forget the name, but a, a smaller, uh, more unknown French varietal had basically a baby that was Petite Syrah, which is why we call it Petite Syrah. Um, but again, as Leslie said, there's nothing petite about it. It's its own wine. It's everything that, that you like about a Cabernet. Any Cabernet lovers out there would love a Petite Syrah because it has all those similar characteristics. But yet it's also very unique on its own to where where it's, it's if you like Cab, you'll like Petite Syrah, but you won't mistake them for the same. Um, usually when we do these virtual tastings, um, I like to get a little bit into the background of, of who our panelists are. And most of the people there by now, I think, know a little bit about me. Um, my background uh, prior to becoming a, a, a vintner was in the broadcast journalism world where I, I grew up in Canada and studied journalism and worked 10 years uh, working for various television stations in the Canadian market and in 1998 moved to Seattle to work for the Fox affiliate and launched the newscast there was there for about seven years before moving to Los Angeles to work for ABC News and along the way met my fabulous husband who was working in the entertainment world uh, former president of Disney Studios Rich Frank and we decided after we were married at some point to leave Los Angeles and leave our respective careers and, and focus full time on the wine industry and move to Napa Valley, which was the best decision that we ever made. So enough about me. I want to, I want to uh, talk a little bit about you, Corey, in a nutshell, give me your, give me, give me the Reader's Digest version of your, your path to winemaker at Frank Family. Assistant winemaker. Assistant winemaker. Yeah. A, a winemaker. Yes. Um, yes. Sorry, Todd Graff. <laughs> <laughs> Something we should know. You're trying to get me in trouble. Uh, so, so my path wasn't, was <laughs> my path wasn't conventional. I uh, I didn't know I wanted to do winemaking. You know, from a young age, it, it's not something. I don't think any winemakers, unless their parents are winemakers or they grew up in Napa, know that that's something you want to do. Um, it's, it took me a while. I, I grew up in San Jose. I went to uh, San Diego state for, for school and I obviously had a great time there. You can't not have a great time at San Diego state. Um, <laughs> and I originally went, I wanted to be a doctor my whole life. That was from kindergarten on when you asked me what I wanted to be, it was doctor until I got to school and I was like, I don't want to do school anymore. Um, four years is enough. I don't want to do another, you know, 10 or more after. So I, I kept my, my biology, you know, biochem degree, um, kept that path. And it was an economic botany class that I took. So any plants that made money, um, whether they were legal or illegal, um, <laughs> and it was the, the study of all those plants that, you know, we didn't, we tried everything that was legal, not the illegal. <laughs> Uh, we only tried the, the legal ones, but it was a, a, a visit to a, a winery in, in Temecula, which is a, a smaller wine growing region outside of San Diego, where I actually made the connection that, that winemaking is science. And that it's something that I, you know, you drink wine and I, we drank plenty of it at San Diego State, but you, you didn't make that connection that it was actually science to make wine. It's science and art and it's nice balance, but it's, it's a lot of science. And, and that connection was, was brought to me there by talking to this winemaker. And at the time I was never going to leave San Diego because it, I mean, you can't, the weather, it's perfect. Uh, but I ended up finding myself back here and I said, oh yeah, there's that option. And I, you know, started in a wine lab with my biochem degree and, and that's, 
that's it. It's, it's well, perfect. We're happy to have you here as part of, uh, part of the Frank family. Um, Zahav, I want to move on to you, uh, another part of our, another member of our Frank family. And you came from an interesting background and, and you fell in love with wine. Did you fall in love with wine or did you fall in love with Napa first? What was the, what, what came first? Napa. Napa. Um, my road to, to wine um, actually started from high tech. Uh, I worked uh, many years um, in high tech, uh, Hewlett Packard specifically, uh, which is primarily based out of California. Uh, my territory was New England. Uh, my divisions I rep were in San Jose. So I had to come to California many, many times uh, during the course of the year. Really fell in love with California because we would travel to all parts of the state. Um, and then um, while you're here, um, it's always a cheaper ticket to stay for a weekend, to stay on a Saturday night. So I had a really good friend from college um, that lived out here. So I would always kind of stay a weekend. And uh, you know what? And we would come to Napa. And anybody who experiences Napa, Napa gets in your soul. And um, then you kind of figure out what to do about it. So you can come and visit a lot. Um, you can move here. Um, whatever it is that kind of nourishes you. So um, honestly, after many years of wanting to be here, uh, 13 years ago, um, I moved out here. And um, you know, if you live in the valley, somehow, some way, you touch wine. Most of us uh, service a grape. You know, whether you're making it, pouring it, selling it. You know. Drinking it, yeah. Um, you know, somehow, <laughs> some way, <laughs> or all of the above. Um, we we are here, you know, to uh, to to kind of touch a grape, and uh, and it's really the energy of the valley. I think that captures everybody who comes here, which is why people continue to come, which is why I moved out here. Um, my first life when I moved out here, I started working at Duckhorn as a wine educator. I worked at Hall um, for a little bit. And really, I'm on my 10th year here um, at Frank Family. So I found my home, found my home. Um, well, here's to 10 years. Thank you. And here's to many more. Here yes, my pleasure, <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> Um, and Marissa, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, you spent some time in other wine regions before you came to Napa Valley. Yeah, so my background's first in marketing. I went to school for that um, back in Rhode Island, um, where I'm originally from, the East Coast. And um, when I graduated, I was trying to find my niche in the marketing world. And I picked up a part-time job at a winery, and I was a wine educator there for a bit. And just fell in love with it and started taking some classes up in Boston. And, you know, it just, it just, you catch the bug, right? And I immediately thought, why not fuse my talent for marketing with my passion for wine and decided to um, move to Bordeaux, France and, and take classes there. So I studied for my um, MBA in wine marketing in Bordeaux. And I was so fortunate to travel all around, all around Europe and um, tasted some amazing wines around the world. And so when I moved back to the US after my studies, I moved out to Napa. I visited for a weekend back in 2016. And like Zahava says, it just gets in your soul. And um, here I am, it, it apparently worked out for me. It was, <laughs> it was a little nerve wracking telling my family I was gonna move out here um, <laughs> didn't really have a plan, just knew I wanted to do this, and I'm loving and it. And here you are, and, and, and you're an important part of Frank's family, so thank you for being here and participating with us today and, and for, um, for being our marketing manager. Uh, it's been a busy time with marketing, with everything that's going on uh, with, with the COVID-19 uh, situation, so um, we've been trying to do a lot of outreach with those of you at home, and um, and hopefully this helps us stay connected. And again, if there is anything that you want to see from us or hear from us, hit us with an email. Uh, Frank Family, um, what's our, uh, Frank Family Vineyard at? Info at frankfamilyvineyards.com. We're monitoring that daily, so we'll get it. She's the marketing manager. Info at frankfamilyvineyards.com. <laughs> right. um, okay, so I think it's time for another trivia question. I think so. Uh, Okay, so this is for our Petite Syrah. We want to know what is the name of the Frank family vineyard where our Petite Syrah is grown? 
Oh, boy. Fantastic. Okay, Robin D'Ambra. Robin D'Ambra, S and J, you got it. Fantastic. She was quick on that. Wow. By the way, a lot of answers and everybody got it right. So they're paying attention. A little quiz here. Isn't it fun? There's a little takeaway. You, you, you learn something about this. You're, they're, they're paying attention. That's great. Um, okay. So this has been, this whole process is, is a, a, a learning curve for, um, for all of us uh, who are doing this, this uh, Zoom webinar. And I'm going to try to put up a map on the screen to show you the vineyards that we're talking about. So can you see the, can you see the map? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, good. I did it right. <laughs> um, all right. So where it says Frank Family Vineyards right here, this is where we are all sitting in one area or another, social distancing. Uh, Marissa's in the front yard outside the tasting room. I'm sitting inside the tasting room and Zahava and Corey are in the, are in a barrel room uh, in the production area. S&J Vineyard right here, this is where this gorgeous Petit Sirah comes from. That's our vineyard right there. And you can see that it's right sort of in between Childs Valley and Atlas Peak, two a AVAs there, American Viticulture Areas. Uh, the Lewis Vineyard, which is where our Chardonnay comes from, the Lewis Chardonnay, this vineyard right here is the Lewis Vineyard, which was um, next to Winston Hill was the second vineyard that we purchased. Um, and it touches up against the San Pablo Bay. So you get those beautiful, cool more those diurnal, the diurnal range. You get those cool mornings and cool evenings, but the heat during the day, which is just perfect for growing Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, where, um, uh, where we grow our Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in, in Carneros. And then, of course, you've got your Winston Hill, which is our estate vineyard and the home of, of Rich and, and myself. And Winston, named after a black and white Springer Spaniel. This was the first vineyard that we purchased back in 1992. 1990, actually. The vineyard, the winery was 1992. The vineyard was uh, in 1990 when, uh, when Rich purchased a house on this vineyard and we've since made it our permanent home, named after a black and white Springer Spaniel. And then our other vineyards, as I mentioned, s &J after the grandchildren, Lewis Vineyard after our eldest grandson, and Benjamin, our youngest grandson, who's uh, 10 years old, this vineyard on the flats of Rutherford. Winston Hill is hillside, Benjamin is floor of of Rutherford. So, so there you go. That's the, uh, that's the Frank family story right there. Um, shown to you on a map. Uh, what I do want to talk about, did Zahava leave us? She said she's had enough. Did she say she's had enough, Corey? That's it. She's gone. Like, she said we're done with Chardonnay. We're, we're, I'm going. No, she'll, she'll be right back. I just heard her. Here she is. Okay. Okay. She's back. Sorry, Zahava. Get us more wine to refill our glasses. Oh my God. Is she it that time already? She is my savior. She refilled us. Oh my goodness. That's Sorry. All right. Well, Corey, I'm moving on to you now because this is a wine. This is our late harvest Chardonnay. And we don't talk about this one very often. We get so caught up in, 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 in the Chardonnays and the Cabernets because that's what we're known for by most people, but we make a late harvest Chardonnay. And for those of you at home who aren't familiar with a late harvest Chardonnay, when do you drink it? What do you drink it with? Corey will answer those questions. Okay, so our late harvest Chardonnay is, is one of the most fun to talk about because it's, it's gross to talk about. I mean, the, the wine is delicious, don't get me wrong, but, but once you hear the details and I tell you why it's so delicious, it's, it's not exciting. Um, so I, Really, it's fascinating. And if you're a science geek, you, you, you'll understand this. Th this is why I don't do sales, uh, but, but also I enjoy the, the aspect of it. Um, I just want to note, thank you, Zahava, for joining me back. Uh, you almost made it without them noticing. Oh, I really thought she left. I thought she was like, okay, I'm, I'm going, I'm 
I'm going to a late lobster feed. I'll see you later. I'm taking my Chardonnay with me. She was supposed to bring me back some lobster and she didn't. Uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> I'm not trading you my Chardonnay for your Pinot this year. <laughs> uh, so so Zahava is a, a very well-known Chardonnay lover amongst us and I love red wines. I love my shards obviously, but I red wines are my heart. And so every, every year for the, the very generous uh, Frank family wine uh, distribution we get at the holidays, uh, Zahava and I always trade our case of white for our case of red. So I always have two cases of red and Zahava always gets two cases of Chardonnay. Uh, so she is my personal favorite person here at, uh, at Frank family for other reasons than Le the Leslie mentioned. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's it's a team. It's teamwork. It's that we absolutely, do here at Frank family. It's, it's, it's a push pull. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but this one it is white. Um, but I still I love this one because of of what it takes to make it. It's it's very unique. Mm. I have a fruit fly in it because we are in the barrel room. <laughs> um, but so it's very pairing. It's very it's and it's very unique. So mm -hmm. so when you smell this wine without without tasting it first, once you smell it, you get these it's very it's Chardonnay mm -hmm. based. It's a Chardonnay grape only, but you get these very unique um characters from it and that's coming from a mold, a, a fungus to be exact. And it's so it sounds gross when you when you say this these grapes were infected by this fungus. And that's what's giving it these wonderful honey is, mm -hmm. is the main, honey, yep. you know, the main character, honey, beeswax, caramel, you're getting that from this, it's a, it's a fungus. And it's, but it's, it's hard to say it's a fungus because you, you know, everyone's left a, a bunch of strawberries in their fridge. And what happens when you forget the strawberries in the back of your fridge, you pull them out, they have this gray fuzzy mold on them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's botrytis. Mm -hmm. And Latin is botrytis scenaria. And it's, it's a typical fruit mold, gray mold, however you wanna call it, um, which does not sound appetizing at all. And is actually, a, it's something that we hate in, in viticulture where if, if your grapes, uh, if you have rain, that's why we hate rain during the, the actual fruit maturing season. Um, if, if the grapes get wet, they can, they can get moldy. It's, it's nature, it's, it's science, it's how it works. But there is the difference, we call it bunch rot and we can call it noble rot. And noble rot is what makes late harvest mm -hmm. and botrytis, uh, botrytis induced wines and no and bunch rot is bad mm -hmm. and the difference is once these it's it's weather it's the microclimates that that happen so if you have a uh which which we are very fortunate to have a, a vineyard in the san pablo bay area in carneros california napa area um mm -hmm. it's lewis vineyard where we grow that uh, all of our our reserve lewis chardonnay comes from there as well mm -hmm. Um, we have a particular couple rows of a certain block that grow closest to our reservoir mm -hmm. and it's the humidity that would cause uh, a mildew or a fungus yeah, to grow sure. and it's those dry hot you if you just have only mildew you're going to have bunch rot which is bad but in the perfect the perfect uh, vintages for it are when we have our, our mildew or our, um, our humidity from mm -hmm. the, the reservoir in those cool mornings that mm -hmm. we're lucky to get near the San Pablo Bay in Carneros, followed by warmer days to, to dry out dry that days. in the, yeah. So if you have your, your grape and it's only getting those wet, humid times, you're gonna get bunch rot. If you have that grape that allows those fungus spores to grow in the morning, and then in the, in the daytime, you have those drier heat from the sun. It'll pause them enough so that that fungus can dehydrate the grape mm -hmm. and not bust it open, but just dehydrate the water. So it's going to concentrate and focus your sugar, your acids, everything in the grape except water. And you can see a picture right now that it does not look appetizing at all, but it's it's perfect for late harvest Chardonnay. But so this fungus is not splitting open the grapes to, to allow other pathogens to, to come in, but it's, it's, it's shriveling them up and shriveling them up 
is taking away just the water. So you're getting these high sugar, high acid, not high acid, but it's focusing on this acid to, to really just add to these flavors and complexity of wine that's, it's, it's only happens in very few, mainly, uh, mainly wine growing regions on, on river sites. That, that'll give you those wonderful characteristics. It's perfect for drinking with a dessert. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite way to have it is with creme brulee. Mm -hmm. um, it's brie cheese. Brie cheese. Blue cheese. It's, it's your post dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to pour yourself a full glass of it. You have just your your sipper, like you would have a port, mm -hmm. and you you have it with your cheese, with your dessert entree in your your course level. Also delicious with vanilla ice cream. I'll take your word for it. Vanilla ice cream, <laughs> and all by itself. All by itself is pretty awesome too. So it, by itself is it, it's not going to be your pour your whole glass of it. Kind of had a rough day. I want a glass of wine, but it's definitely your 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 savor with your your dessert, dessert or just yep. savor a small amount at the end of the day because you can. <laughs> And it, and it is something that will last you, it, you're it, because it is so concentrated and, and sweet. Um, you're, you're not going to drink a lot of this in one sitting. At least I don't think you are. If, if you do, you might have a terrible headache the next day, but it is something that does last. You, you don't have to drink it all right away. Going off of that, that's something also, you know, with, if I, I don't have this problem personally, but I hear that if you leave a partial bottle of still wine, typical any of your other wines for too long, you know, partial on your counter, you're not going to want to drink them after a few days because they've oxidized. So you drink them all is my solution. But with the late harvest and with our port as well, because of the high sugar, um, those wines are more protected. So those wines will actually last on your counter or even better yet, if you pour your small amount of late harvest, put the bottle in your fridge, it's going to last you for at least a month. So they're smaller bottles, they're 375 mils as opposed to 750. So half the size and you're drinking half the pour, but they'll last you much longer. Just put it in the fridge and, and enjoy a little bit as you go each time. And if you do happen to have this at home right now, share this with mom if you can, because mothers love the late harvest Chardonnay. My mother has a huge sweet tooth and she loves this wine. And it's, it, it's, she also loves dessert. So the two paired together <laughs> work with, yeah, it's, it's a sugar high. Um, Maureen Palladini, hi Maureen, thanks for watching today. She's asking us a question, do, do we buy any of our grapes in the Carneros region? The answer is yes, we do purchase grapes. Uh, the wines that we're tasting today are from our Lewis Vineyard, but we have a couple of wines that we make exclusively for wine club that our neighbor that that we purchase from our neighbors uh some giacomos and and andy beckstoffer and we make uh wine club um specific wines saint giacomo chardonnay and beckstoffer chardonnay and and um and you can talk a little bit more about our napa tier and and how we do purchase from our our neighbors in the carneros area for that particular chardonnay corey Yes, so um, so one of our grower partners that we produce from is Paladini Vineyards. Uh, the the I believe it's the Contessa of Carneros uh, is what Miss Paladini uh, is known for in Napa, and she's a, a fantastic partner of ours. Uh, we our our primary vineyard sources are our own for sure name pino it happens to be lewis vineyard but but we do we source from from reputable growers who who care about quality as we do and the, and that's the key for us when when todd makes these arrangements with with growers who you know aren't our employees per se where it's it's that they care as much about the quality as we do and and it's we couldn't do this without the fantastic partners that we have and maureen is one of them where you just it's it, it would be impossible to do without them okay uh, i have just launched a poll and we would um love for you to play along with the poll it gives us an idea of which wines you liked what uh, what you what you would like to hear more about in the future etc 
Um, so please uh, participate in the poll if you can, and that would be wonderful. Um, but I think right about now we have our fourth and final trivia question. Marissa, you want to take that one? Sure. Okay. Last one, guys. This is for the late harvest Chardonnay. We want to know what is the name of the beneficial mold that grows on our late harvest grapes under specific vineyard conditions? <laughs> okay. I was getting answers before you even finished asking the question. And first, did they spell it right? Did they spell well, okay. I, you know what? I believe um, yes, I believe the spelling is correct. Isn't that, that's, that's great. All right. It is Tommy, is it Huel or Huey? My, my eyes are terrible. Um, Tommy, you know who you are. And yes, he said, he said Botrytis or Noble Rot. So yes, you are absolutely correct. And thank you for listening and playing along. But we had a lot of answers here and they were all, they were all correct. Not all spelled correctly. Oh, Marcy Cavanaugh. Hi, Marcy. I see that you're, you're joining us. Hi, Marcy. Nice to, nice to see that you're watching. Um, that's great. Um, oh, Mark, you're saying it wasn't fair because the survey was up. Come on, come on. You can do two things at once here. Um, we're running out of time here, but um, we've only got a few minutes. And I, and I just wanted to keep the poll up as well. But anyway, it's all fair. We'll do more trivia in the future. Another reason why you're going to ha have to have uh, to stay tuned and you'll have your your chance to uh to win as well so i'll keep the poll up there for another um another minute or so um so zahava tell me this we've tasted three wines today that are from the chardonnay grape uh the lady edith the your favorite the lewis reserve and the late harvest chardonnay um why is your how how would you compare the three? I mean, is it, do you enjoy drinking the other two um, as much as the Lewis Chardonnay? Obviously, each has a time and a place, but I guess what I'm trying to say are there are three very different styles between these three Chardonnays. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think they- And you, all from the same vineyard. All from the same vineyard. Um, so the fruit is actually a beautiful vineyard. The fruit is awesome out of the vineyard, but the sparkling wine, you know, um, sparkling wine is, um, I love sparkling wine. And I really believe it works with all foods, any time of day, you kind of don't need a reason to drink sparkling or no wine. Food. Or no food, yes, you really don't need a reason. It's not intrusive. Wednesday, Wednesday, is Wednesday. we, we, we were, were just talking talk about, about uh, Wednesday's the best day to, to make yourself feel special in the yeah. middle of the week and open a really awesome bottle of wine and just- uh, Don't just, save it for your celebration, save it for your bad days. Yes, because you deserve it, you deserve it. So, I mean, I, I guess so if you had to tear them, you know, you could always start with the sparkling, even though it could move um, through your meal and through the end of the meal. You know, our Lewis Chardonnay is just awesome. Um, you know, it works with food, works without food. So um, it, it can work, you know, like I say, with or without a meal. And your your late harvest Chardonnay, you know, is really kind of for after. So if you're a Chardonnay lover, you can kind of do beginning, middle, and end, um, you know, with different styles um, of the same Chardonnay grape. And, and I think that's one of the things, you know, with consumers, you know, that we find is, you know, a lot of people think that all Chardonnay tastes the same or all Cab tastes the same. Mm. And the thing is, is they're all really different um, depending on the style you make them on, you know, how you cook them, how you spice them, the different vintages, they all really, really taste different. So I think, you know, as a general statement, when you come to Napa, try everything because you really don't know what it's going to taste like because it's always going to be different, I think, than what you think. Um, my, my take home from what you just said, Zahava, was that you can have these three bottles of Chardonnay with no food. Yes. Yeah. It, just drink all three bottles, no food yet, needed. So, and I, and I think we've been doing that today. Yes. So, Right, and and the saying is um, actually it's it's something that uh, Liam Garrity, our director of hospitality, likes to say. He said there are two times to drink wine, with food and without. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do want to say that uh, Christina Radu, who's watching us from Los Angeles, says that she gave the Lady Edith as uh, Christmas gifts last year and everyone went crazy for it. And she says, 
this Christmas, she's going to order more for gifts. So if you're thinking ahead, Christina, we're in May and you're thinking about Christmas. I like your style. That's fantastic. And, um, and Marcy Cavanaugh, who's uh, joining us from the San Diego area, she says she loves the idea of drinking a great wine on bad days. Since I drink good wine on good days too, I've covered the week. <laughs> That's funny. All right, I'm gonna end our poll our Women in Wine virtual tasting. Uh, the first question was, tell us your favorite wine to enjoy on Mother's Day. And let's see, the Louis Vineyard Chardonnay, 47% of you uh, said Louis Vineyard Chardonnay. Lady Edith was a close second, 43%. The Petite Syrah was 27 and the Late Harvest, 12%. And should we do more questions and giveaway, trivia questions and giveaways? 100% um, of you said, yes, <laughs> yes, we think it was fun. And I'm sure more people would like a chance to win. Uh, and then question three. Question of, did they spell their name right? They get points for it. <laughs> 200, 200, I believe. <laughs> we didn't specify spelling, so that's okay. But you know what? They got it right. Botrytis, most of the people who said botrytis got it right. I mean, got the spelling correct. That's, that's great. Have you heard about Frank Family's new private virtual tastings with the Coravin? 35% of you say you've signed up already. That's fantastic. And 67% say no, tell you more. Well, I'll keep it brief, but we are doing virtual tastings that are private one-on-one. -on -one. And what you will get along with your virtual tasting package, which you can purchase on our website, frankfamilyvineyards.com, go to the um, uh, virtual tasting. Marissa, what's, what's the link that takes them to the virtual tastings? The wine link and then virtual tasting, right? We'll want to go to our shop page and then we have a whole page there dedicated to all of our virtual tasting packages. So why don't you tell us more about the Corbin? And so we just launched that this week, and um, I, it seems like everyone's really excited for it. We are too. Um, we launched three new packages for private virtual tastings. So you will be met with either Liam, our director of hospitality, or a member of our hospitality team, and you'll be doing a Zoom meeting kind of like this, but we'll get to see you and interact with you. And um, we have three different packages um, ranging from some fun library wines, so a nice vertical. Um, and each package comes with a Corbin. So, and, and the Corbin is, is deeply discounted. So it's, it's a great deal and you should check it out. If you don't have a Corbin at home, those of you who don't know, Corbin, it allows you to um, pour yourself a glass or a sample for the tasting and um, you don't even have to open the cork in the bottle. So it's a great preservation system for wine. And it's also fun because you can have your friends join. So it's a private little party. So if, if, if you and, and whoever you're whoever you're sheltering in place with and you want to do a private tasting and then you, you know, call your friend and say, Hey, I want to do it with, uh, you know, Jane and, and Bob, you can call them up and you can have a little zoom party and have one of our wine educators, um, do a, a private one-on-one -on -one virtual tasting. So it's really a fun idea. And, um, and we've had some great success with it. Uh, and I think that, again, it goes back to our tasting room is not open right now. Napa Valley tasting rooms are closed for the time being. We're looking forward to the day that we can reopen and we hope it's not in the too distant future, maybe another couple of weeks, maybe by June. Again, we don't have a definitive answer. I know that we've been uh, planning for it and looking at new protocols for when the, the tasting room opens. And again, it's all, uh, it's all up to uh, the powers that be and Governor Gavin Newsom to give the okay that we can do that. And I think we're more of a phase three right now. So um, it's gonna be a bit, but we'll continue. And even after we reopen, um, if you can't make it to Napa, we hope to make it to you. And we are always here for you and we always appreciate your feedback. So while the tasting room's not open, we are answering the phone and checking emails. So please um, email us at info at frankfamily.com. Call us at the tasting room, 707-942-0859. Leave a message. We will get back to you. But right now, most importantly, it's Mother's Day weekend. And this was such a wonderful way to kick off the weekend with the fabulous women 
at Frank Family Vineyards, Marissa McCann, our marketing manager, Corey Garner, our assistant winemaker, and Zahava Gracer, our wonderful tasting room manager and uh, wine educator extraordinaire. Thank you so much for participating with us today. I'm Leslie Frank with Frank Family Vineyards. And until we see you next week, oh, do I have time to give a plug for next week? Can I do that? Can I give a plug for next week? You're on the so, call, so you can do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Um, so next Saturday, this is kind of fun. We're partnering, and this was Rich's idea, my, my fabulous husband, Rich Frank. He thought, you know, in this time of COVID-19, why don't we partner with some of our neighbors and do something kind of fun? You know, people can't come to Napa right now. Let's bring them a taste of Napa, not just Frank family, but let's bring them a taste of Pritchard Hill and our friends up at Chapelet and Stag's Leap, our friends at Ragushi, all family owned wineries. And by the way, we love the Chapelets and the Ragushis who happen to be friends of ours. So we thought we would put together something called Napa Neighbors. And next Saturday at 2 p.m. May 16th, we will have a virtual tasting with my husband, Richard Frank, Cyril Chapelet of Chapelet Winery and Jim Ragushi of Ragushi Winery. And it will be moderated by the one and only Andrea Robinson, Master Sommelier, only one of 23 women Master Psalms in the world. And we will be tasting a Chardonnay and a Cabernet from each winery. Uh, that package, by the way, is available on our website, frankfamilyvineyards.com. So, it's going to be a fun time and oh my husband rich is in the background what do you want me to say about that do you want to make an appearance this is the girls tasting but you're talking now so get in here hold on rich is making he's trying to tell me what to say here so now i, I just on the was going to tell you you did a great job this was fun to watch okay but next week they're going to watch you with your friends yes and um, and it's a family show so you got to keep you know i can't promise what the three of us may say I we know. get we get scolded <laughs> all the time by the women well, I'm not scolding you. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. Maybe anyway, I should be giving the folks at home a heads up. It'll be a family. We're, we're going to try to keep it a family show. <laughs> it's 2 o'clock Pacific time. What did I say? 2 o'clock. So yeah. there are people oh, back yes. east. Yes, I know. 2 o'clock okay. Pacific time, 5 o'clock on the you east You did coast. great, all of you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Rich. Um, ladies, thank you. Moms at home, happy Mother's Day. We love you. Mwah. Thanks for participating. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Jeff.